Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us, and welcome to Firing Range, a podcast to talk about all things Destiny, weapons, abilities, loadouts, and the sandbox at large. What is going on? How are you? Featuring uh, Dr. Disrespect's cousin over here, decked out in chief gear. Hey, you uh, you refer to me as Super Bowl champion cool guy, by the way. <laughs> hey, congrats, buddy. Congrats, buddy boy. Glad you're I'm doing great. Red. I bet you I'm are. Doing great. Yeah. I can imagine you are. <laughs> you're on cloud nine right now. Cami, love the Maybe background. Maybe even cloud ten. Thank you. <laughs> Any particular Concede reason? So much of it this season. Yeah, I know. Aquilo SMG, I made it now. Less <laughs> flinch on MK. Just yeah. a more consistent weapon. Uh, I would love to dive into chat about that weapon in a hot minute, because damn. Uh, Drew, how you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm well. Chilling. Awesome. Chilling like a villain. Drew doesn't have a webcam tonight, but you know what? We are we only really mostly want Drew for that hot, sultry Canadian voice. So I think we'll be fine. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. <laughs> Anyway, thank you everybody for joining us. I see all of y'all in the live Twitch chat. Good to have you here. This is our last show before Lightfall. I, I tweeted out that it was our last show. Forgot the phrase before Lightfall. And then threw in a couple corrections, but still gave a couple people a few heart attacks. So my bad on that. <laughs> Not clickbait on God. <clears throat> it's our last show. We're all bungee dubs now. Thanks, Merck. <laughs> classic youtuber strategy get him with the clickbait bro last show ever uh but this is our final show before lightfall which is dropping in under a week from today which is kind of wild to think about uh are you guys like are you ready for lightfall at this point it, it always comes so much faster than i expect yeah i'm the kind of player that likes mastering what we have in front of us and they pull out more content than i can master and so i'm always playing catch up <laughs> yeah that is true cool guy you you about ready are you prepared i am man all the video documentaries look really really good um you know it we're gonna see about the aerial gameplay um all yeah. we know all we see is the grapple but i can't wait to see how it all intertwines yeah i would love to talk about that in a hot minute as well drew are you are you ready for lightfall would you say Yes and no. I feel like from a gameplay perspective, yeah, I'm going to play it. I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, I think I'm ready for that. We did a lot of farming. <laughs> Tell a lot me of all about the farming. What are you armor. going for? Master Keitel, Artifice Armor. Yes, that was a hot ticket about a week or so ago, right? Did you guys get a ton of Artifice uh, Armor with good rolls? Spread it across the three characters. I think Drew went full Hunter. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm a one trick. Yeah. So I literally just <laughs> went in on like just making sure that my builds would be like one to one or as yeah. as best as possible with that artifice gear and yeah. what we know is uh, going to be advantageous with it. And I think I succeeded in my two main builds, which is like obviously Invis, Spectral, mm -hmm. and Arc Strider. So I'm feeling prepared from a gameplay point of view. Um, so yeah. I got oh. one question for you, Drew. <laughs> Sure. Hanzo or Widow? <laughs> uh, if, you, if, you, if you're going to one trick, there's only one answer here, by the way. I don't play Overwatch, so okay. I don't actually That, that know is actually anything. the correct answer. Or enough. <laughs> that we don't play I, Overwatch. That was the correct answer, Drew. <laughs> trick question from Cool Guy. Uh, yeah, I got a bunch of split stat artifice armor from Keitel. That was a good week of farming. I got the runs down to like three and a half to four minutes. Like it was like pretty consistently too. Cool guy, did you get any artifice armor before the... Uh, I, I actually, I've had really good artifice armor. Oh yeah? Yeah. Oh, whoa. So, um, and Sorry. the ones that I <clears throat> did obtain weren't as good as the ones that I had. So that's how I know I'm looking pretty good. Interesting. So... Drew, here's a follow-up question for you, just because you mentioned that your uh, your deep, unchangeable love for being a hunter main in PvP. <clears throat> Have fun in hell, by the way. Uh, do you think that the new Strand subclasses are going to be good enough to maybe pull you off of Camo Hunter? Muted. There you go. You got it. 
There is a there is. incredibly loud car that just went by. I'm sorry. I was <laughs> Not like a problem. Waiting for that, and it just <laughs> kept going. Um, will it be enough to take me off? I don't know. I'm going to give it a chance. I'm going to give it a shot. If it resonates with the way that, you know, I like playing and want to play, then hmm. sure. I'm I'm always open to that. I'm going to, of course, give it a try. And, uh, I mean, if it's if it's strong and, and fun, of course, if it's fun, then... This is, yeah, I mean, this is like a good jumping off know. point right now because I did want to talk about each new subclass because we've gotten a lot of information from Bungie. They've done kind of like, you know, a little developer insight video. Here's what we're thinking. We put Strand together. We've got the trailer for each class. We've got a couple of info dumps on Bungie.net. Uh, so why don't we start with the Threadrunner, which is the Hunter Strand subclass. Uh, I want to get everyone's general thoughts, but just still, Drew, what would, what would you define as like... Because you said if it feels good to you, if it's you know if it's if it's up to par with what you're hoping it should be, then you would maybe play it. So what in your mind would make that happen? What would you get in the like? What would your ideal vision for the Red Runner be? Maybe. Uh, I don't really know. I think a lot of my. I mean, it's no secret that the, a lot of the ways I like to play, like kind of. I I didn't. This isn't my words. I feel like I forget who said this in Discord. Cam, maybe you can remember. Maybe it was it's one of the folks that we hang out with from mm-hmm. your from your Discord. He said, I think that he well, the way they described, it, I think a lot of the loadouts I build is like they're they're encouraged or like I try and make my opponent think or think twice. Like so that, maybe yeah. that might be like outplaying themselves in some way. Yeah, you, know, you want to rip them out of like autopilot. Yeah, like, you know, I want to either give them a little bit of hesitancy before they go full on aggression or like, you know, maybe think a little, think think or at all, or maybe a little bit harder to the point that they overthink. Here's um, a... So, uh, I don't know. Oh, go ahead, yeah. Drew. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know what Strand's going to bring with that. Uh, maybe, um, I, like, I, I know Sounds so little. Sounds like it has some <laughs> elevation changes, right? To make yeah, people I was going to say maybe the angles. Yeah, maybe with the elevation, the way that you can approach angles or kind of like fake that or bait that. Who knows? It's hard to tell, though, because it's so early. Here's a great metaphor to describe the uh, the Drewski play style, right? Every one of you listening to me right now on the show and at home, think about this. You've been breathing all day on your own without telling your body to breathe. Now think about it. Think about the fact that you're breathing. Control it. Now I'm in your head. Now you've realized you're breathing in and out are you gonna like are you gonna focus on it like it drew just kind of like he, he he kind of jolts you where you are makes you think about something because drew i know you like uh you like gemini gestures a lot on arc and you like tricking people up with camo on void a lot of what you do is kind of like radar teasing where are they on the map flanking a lot of stuff like that you make people think you kind of you try to trip them up a little bit maybe a little ankle mental ankle breaking maybe I try to. It doesn't always work, you know. <laughs> and there's some really smart players in this game, but that's the that's the kind of stuff that feels really, really fun and satisfying to me, and I and I love the value of it. I mean, to a fault, I, I don't think I can play. It's either I'm playing Invis or if I'm playing another subclass, there's no way I'm not using Gemini's, and I feel like I've spoiled the game for myself in that way. But, by, <laughs> you know, giving Strand a shot, maybe it'll have some really cool synergy with Gemini's because I don't think that... You know what? One thing I will say... Sure is arc strider is like the only class that i could play or feel that i enjoy other than spectral and i use gemini's on it on it um but it's because of blink as a movement option i feel like without stompies um or a sprint speed bonus of some sort Uh it's really the game feels a lot slower and it's uh it's a lot harder to reposition and like make use of space um, and have that sense of urgency, even timings to beat other teams to to mid or break mid. It really matters. Um, wow. So I like Arc Strider with it because of Blink. That's like a speed boost. And I don't really use Rose or uh, Lightweight Weapons, so I don't get that avenue as a print speed bonus. So with Strand, though, you know, with that grapple, it looks like that could uh, perhaps do something similar and give you that kind of a a boost in that way so maybe it'll be another thing that i use for that reason i think a lot of people maybe the majority of the people who i've talked to are really excited about the thread runner uh thread runner hunter 
because of the movement possibilities. Like, I mean, no one's really gotten their hand in the dough yet, as far as I know. Uh, but because all classes have access to the grappling hook ability, right? But the hunter is the one right. who can take advantage of it more than others with the specific aspects that the hunters have access to. Question about Strand. The hunter has an ability that's similar to Shatter Dive with Strand, right? Correct, yeah. I call those Descenders. Does okay. Warlock and Titan have one too? No idea. No idea. Um, That would be really no huge idea. if they did. I mean, Warlocks has Phoenix Dive, which is kind of like we have Shatter Dive It does, at home. but that's on Solar. Yeah, yeah. So if Hunter's the only one with a Descender, I think I'm just going to play that. Now, I did see something interesting, Cami, on Twitter. I saw a tweet from QJ. Uh, that says that the strand, like he showed a clip of the hunter doing the strand dive, and it mm -hmm. looked like it ate the hunter's class ability. Uh, so does that kind of change your, let's say in theory, doing that hunter dip with strand eats up your dodge. Are you still going to do it? If it's not as spammable as shatter dive? A shatter dive. I don't even know if it should have been that spammable. To so no, with, I mean, but... yeah, like Phoenix dive takes it away too. I mean, it's a trigger for something. Shatter mm -hmm. dive isn't a trigger. It just it can shatter, but it True. doesn't. It, I mean, that looks you know the, the the strand gameplay. It does something just like Phoenix dive does something. So it consumes it. Aerial gameplay is still good, but mm -hmm. it's not a answer to everything. When you start playing good players, they will just look up and beam you out of the sky. So. Yeah, you have to have a way to descend quickly. That is true. I've actually been playing a lot of Stompy Revenant Hunter lately, and just I the speed and being able to jump up, you know, throw a dust field. Yeah, I use the uh, dust fields too. Get extra elevation, yeah. jump even higher, shatter dive down. You know, so even if shatter dive took my class ability, I would still run that aspect. Really interesting. Okay, fair enough. Cool guy. You play a lot of Hunter. What, what are you thinking about for Threadrunner there? What are you looking forward to? Uh, you know, I, I would assume that, you know, and everybody listening, you know, whatever character you complete the campaign with, you'll probably get the exotic for, right? Probably. That's what um, they did in Witch Queen, right? I'm I, I advise not to do that. Do a Law Sector. The one they give you is usually bad. It's true, but I mean, you could get the you could get the exotic right away, and then still hunt for a better one later. True, <laughs> true. Uh, you know, it's really tough, and it's also because I mean, let's this past season it went really unnoticed. We did we didn't have an exotic, which is weird. Um, that was like, weird. Yeah, we usually get like you know, Lorele here, uh, Jer Falcon there. Um, didn't have anything, so maybe for whatever reason it got pushed back or maybe maybe we're getting you know more so uh out of the current ones anything that plays into ae bow tracer is probably gonna be like really good with it um we don't know how bombardiers are gonna, gonna interact oh that's um, interesting yeah didn't think about so, that didn't think about yeah that. so i mean that, that's that's kind of what i'm leaning to but i mean we don't know what we don't know so don't know what we don't know that is definitely true well i mean on on titan i feel like lion rampant might make a resurgence if their grapple is good enough you might just suspend yourself in the air after a grapple yeah so maybe dmt is back on the menu hmm. i still think it's good with behemoth it's just behemoth basically needs a different super for it to be able to keep up with the other titan elements yeah so i see a lot of people not liking what they see with that new titan strand super but man like oh, dude, yeah remember oh, the whole community was upset about that green striker yeah. dude, dude but like original behemoth like it original behemoth went ham man it went ham so, dude. Ham. so like you don't know you don't know it could do a full it. lap yeah. around javelin four it could yeah and beat i hope that strand isn't that way if i had to describe the strand one it's like having both eager edge and black talon at the same time <laughs> yeah, because it, it has the it, like it looked like a pretty good range. It has a ranged melee and an up close. I still feel like that's too similar to Striker, but I don't really play the classes for the super. I play it for the neutral anyway. Here, just to remind our listeners at home, I will read the two new strand aspects that are coming to the Thread Runner Hunter, and we'll get to the other subclasses shortly. We've got a uh, Ensnaring Slam, which is the you know the Shatter Dive basically while in the air. Hit the air move input to slam downward, suspending all nearby enemies. 
And then we have a widow silk. This aspect grants an additional grenade charge. The hunter's grapple ability creates a persistent grapple tangle when it latches, which fully refunds grenade energy when grappled too. Hunters can use this ability to set up chains of grapple points that their entire team can use, greatly enhancing their ability to quickly move around in combat and or traverse the environment. Um, I'm thinking like three hunters in PvP with really good map knowledge and like really good teamwork. Like I'll put up a grapple point here, 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 and you got like crazy movement potential out there. Uh, I'm interested to see if it's going to be momentum based. Like if you can eager edge into a grapple, like, are you going to keep oh, it? Like that's an interesting thought. Yeah, I'm not. I'm curious sure. on how quick the start up and end leg is going to be for these, and if it's realistic to do in <laughs> mid gun fight. Yeah, it, it's going to be like be about it. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, if it has like a lot of startup frames, it would be, you know, kind of unfortunate, but. I mean, yeah, provided it's quick, which I think it should be. Uh, Bungie's been talking up the mobility game on the Threadrunner a lot, like the movement yeah. potential. They've been talking a big game on it. They, they, they've kind of solidified. You know, they built it and they want it to be the aerial class. So yeah, if it's truly quick, I think this might be the update that really separates controller and MNK sandbox wise. What do you mean by that? I think MNK is going to deal with the aerial play a lot better if it's really quick acting to just change elevation rapidly, but build they, up that speed. But they did make that change. Didn't they make that change to the sandbox where uh, controller feels noticeably better uh, than it did before in the air? Am I making that up in my head? I'm not talking about the AE. I'm talking about just your... Just in general. Holding a crosshair at head level... Then they appear in the air, then they descend down, got then it, they go back it, up. It. Okay. It's like trying to track that is so difficult. On the sticks, yeah, it's kind of, you know. I can see that being maybe a thing, depending on how quick I, you can I, zoom around. I, I just hope that all the animations are smooth, man. Because, you know, it was brought up on Twitter, I mean, multiple times, you know, on rubber banding and melees. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, because the game sees a melee, uh, say you have Synthos on, or, I mean, whatever, you get, like a lunge, right? Sure. The game sees the range, and it it's literally a suction vacuum. Like, th there's nothing else but a teleport, warp, aim assist melee, yep. right? And I, I, I've always, and that's been an issue for a long time. Like, I almost wish that each lunge had an actual animation, and it would look slower because it's smooth, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um uh, you know how like the, the the thunderclap has its own information. Yeah, you have to charge it up. That's what I'm talking about. But it has that animation of going forward. Like yeah, if, right. if they could do that, uh, f you know, to maybe stop some of that rubber banding and the suction, I, mm -hmm. I'd be cool with that. So when I think a strand, like I hope that the movement is smooth, man. Because if it starts, you know, especially with people lagging, if it starts rubber banding around and then like a lunge melee with the rubber banding, like same. I call that animation, Jake. One of the big ones is crab walking during a slide instead of a smooth slide animation. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I'm pretty sure that, I mean, I'm pretty sure that they've, all the physics of it, that they've kind of honed in. So I've been dying to a lot of shoulder charges without any shoulder charge animation. <laughs> they just appear. Um, yeah, you, you get the uh, the actual in the feed, your shotguns first, but like their limp body falls into you and you die, right? <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> You've been shoulder charged. Yeah, sure I have. Another thing I thought was neat about the uh, the new Hunter is that uh, they're like rope dart melee. There's one little tidbit they threw in there with the rope dart melee. They said if uh, like, you know, you throw it out and then it comes back to you. And if you, yeah. if you catch the rope dart by hitting the melee button at the right time, then you get a like you get kind of rewarded for that perfect timing. They write perfect per, uh, perfecting that timing will earn the player an additional amount of melee energy, which is that kind of reminded like me of like you, you ever play old Gears school of Gears of War? You get the, the manual yeah. reload and you just like active reload. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if like double melee kickstart will work with that. You know, you throw it, you I get wonder. the kickstart, and then when you catch it, you get more. I bet it would work. I bet it would work too. I kind of hope that they do things to oppose enemy abilities like that. Like, for example, mm -hmm. the hunter throwing knife. If you time your own just limp arm melee in the air, it kind of parries the knife and prevents the one hit. That would be a sick interaction if they could keep doing stuff like that. Oh, man. There's just so much. Uh, any mm -hmm. other thoughts on the hunter before we maybe talk about a different 
new subclass? No. Before we, before we we jump uh, to the next subclass, do you mind if I bring up a topic? I don't mind at all. Go go right for it. Uh, yeah, because you know we kind of decided that you know we were going to talk about what's what's upcoming and we we're sure. just going to flow flow. We did. Um, yeah. A lot of the weapons that we've got recently have been very power creepy. Um, the Iclus SMG comes to mind. <clears throat> um, it, you know, Exalted Truth. So when you have these things like the Exalted Truth, especially with Encore, can get 100 range. You know, it can it can min max stacks with Range Finder, right? So we've never had a hand cannon that can get 100 range with Range Finder and just keep it. Uh, as far as a 140, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the Iclos SMG, you know, stat wise, extremely strong. Uh, we we have the the Volt Shot with the Iclos SMG, just just really strong thing. So what I'm interested to see this upcoming year with the seasons is how those are are going to be matched, right? Um, we saw a little tidbit from the from the video documentary. It looked like a spare rations is being held in there, but it, dude, if that's spare yes. rations. Like Rose is an outlier because it has that lightweight bonus. Like I will give you that. I personally don't like Rose because I can't get a good roll on it. If it, if... <laughs> well, aren't all the rolls good you. on Rose? No, and they're not. Um, <laughs> it has so many great perks on it. It does, but a crafted Ostringer is it, it claps it. Like I, I, I feel that you need a five out of five out of Rose for it to get in your daily routine. My personal opinion. Fair enough. Um, but, um. You know, the, these weapons, I wouldn't say have to, like, they, they almost have to match them, dude, because things come out like Cantata. Cantata was right right when it came out. It had some really cool things. We had Zero Synergy. It was right when the uh, Foundry stuff came out. So it can get 80 range rangefinder uh, with Eye of the Storm, right? It was the first weapon since the old Ostringer that could get that combo. So, like, then things start dropping out and dropping out. But I see some of these weapons that are coming up, and I'm like, what are they going to do to top that? Um, because a lot of the, the the aim assist is juiced or the range stat is juiced. So there's just so many good mm-hmm. things about them. So I I really wonder, I want to hear what you guys think, you know, just about you know the whole power creep thing. Um Yeah. Um how are they gonna because dude, there's a lot we have our initial just from the comet, the the initial rush of weapons <laughs> in gear that's gonna be in the game. And then we have our seasons, and then we have raid weapons, and then you know what I'm saying. Wasn't that so, kind of Bungie's original goal with sunsetting? Not to, not to. I'm not gonna talk about bringing that back because I don't want it to come back. But like, wasn't that yeah. their original plan? Was like guns just keep getting crazier and crazier? And it's like, how do we keep topping this? You know what I mean? Like, it's uh, it's definitely a thing. I I really don't know. Um, I think we've seen situations where. If one, per, like, Bungie has shown that they now have the ability to really do super fine-tuned uh, patching and, and, like, nerfing and stuff like that. Like, remember when the Zerb main ingredient was just going so hard for so long and they just kept trying to change fusions and eventually they were like, you know what, fuck it. We're just going <laughs> to make sure it, like, changes directly to the main ingredient. Um, yeah, I think they have a lot of customizability there. Uh, I yeah. hope their solution uh-huh. isn't to just crack down on stuff that is hot to let the new uh, weapons shine. I don't think that'll be their play, but who knows? Well, it could, dude, it could be a combination of new perks. Maybe if there are new perks that are good enough that have, especially if they have uh, some kind of unique synergy with all the strand things coming down the pipe, that might be an interesting combination. Or if they're just good standalone uh-huh. perks, you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like, okay, that could be a new thing that outshines you know whatever you've been rocking in the past i think there's a couple of things they could do for sure yeah i mean dude like uh cascade point and target lock like there's they're such great additions to the game uh-huh so i mean th- that's probably what i'm most excited for are you know how to use them yeah you know. yeah the new perks augmenting the weapons is i think how they do it <clears throat> some of but, them I come mean, with trade-offs though like gut shot and slick draw for example and i think that they keep going down that route of making interesting trade-offs, then I think we're good. The other one's the origin traits. Like, Sura Synergy with the Anti-Flinch is very sought after for me, but the most sought after is the Iron Banner weapons. And I think they've intentionally made these Iron Banner weapons not be in the good archetypes, because otherwise I really do feel that I would just main Iron Banner weapons. <laughs> yeah, Skulking Wolf is a great trade. It's a good trade, um, yeah. Dude, even, like... 
Yeah, it's tough to put away your Ward Cliff coil, dude. I know. But if you if you throw on, you know, the Iron Banner rocket, it can be stowed. So when you're in low health, it procs. <clears throat> or if you don't know what to run in your in your heavy in PvP. Um yeah, but you know, the the, the aren't they bringing back some some of the better Iron Banner weapons? Or not? Yeah, they might be. I think they're still bringing another adaptive pulse or something like that. But what yeah. I'm really most excited for in the future, they haven't said they're bringing this one back, but they have to, right? Kermil's dagger and then the steady hand, right? The other 120s. Oh, that would be interesting, yeah. Yeah, I very much think no matter what perks, it could be an empty hand cannon as long as it has Skulking Wolf. I'm probably <laughs> going to make those at some point. Um, we just kind of glossed over it real quick. But yeah, what do you guys think about the... I mean, we're jumping all over the place today. That's fine, though. That's totally fine. Uh, did you see the new kind of insight trailer today and that hot rumor going around on Twitter about the potential return of the spare rations hand cannon? I mean, I know cool. Yeah, I've seen already. a lot on Twitter. Yeah. I think it might have to be a lightweight to compete. I don't know what it could bring to the table. Yeah, man. There's so much competition right now in the hand cannon department. It's crazy. Like, we have so many good options. Like, we have, I have a five out of five rows, in my opinion, which I love. Uh, it's the same thing with like Waking Vigil, right? Like, I think that gun is. That sounds fun. What is the all five out of five, five rows? Until you get a five out of five, right? Let's see. I'm I'm technically here. Let me let me show you what my uh, rose has exactly, Cami. I was hoping for rangefinder in the in the final column. I'd I'd say maybe mine's like a four four point five out of five. If I'm being dead honest. Mm -hmm. Let's see. That is not it. That is not it. That is it right there. Okay, I've got corkscrew, accurized, slide shot, explosive payload, with a range masterwork. That sounds wonderful. It is great. I was really, really hoping for that rangefinder in column four. I was definitely bummed that I didn't get it, but I don't think you should be bummed. I think explosive payload no. is the move. Payload yeah, has a lot of play. like it's it's got viability. That's the one I was about to say. I was gonna yeah. say moving target explosive, or if I'm playing like let's say stasis or strand, I might want elemental capacitor with explosive. Yeah. And it's, then it's definitely uh, nice extended for mag for AE as well, if I'm building into that. Okay, that's a good call. Uh, I do have slide range finder, moving target range finder, quick draw explosive you payload. You have slide shot range finder? I do. Is it? I have an. I have one too, but it it tanks in all other categories. Uh, like... It's sixty range, sixty two stability, so it's appended small bore. The uh, moving target range is flared full bore range master, so it's sixty eight range, forty five stability. Like I, I, again, I look at that and I'm like, why wouldn't I just use my Ostringer? Um, it, I mean, the bonus is good, of course, a lightweight bonus, but that Ostringer duels, man. Ostringer's pretty hot. I, yeah, it's again, so much competition in the hand cannon department. What do we have? We have Rose, Ostringer, we have Ias Luna, we have Palindrome. Like... Yeah, Palindrome. So that's what was cool about Exalted Truth because that is an equal to that gun. They're both void, they both are jacked in stats. And it's one of those, like, if you didn't get a good Palindrome, the Exalted Truth can match what it did and you know likewise feel you could just simply like palindrome or if you ever get an exalted truth that just has poor stats that doesn't match palindrome can be better it's like that's what i kind of envision um I, I know a lot of people that you know they got really good roles on exalted truth and they're just keeping with their palindrome and vice versa right yeah, um yeah. they they love their palindrome six thousand kills but they got a perfect exalted truth and they're all over it so that's what's uh, nice drew's been on a lot of not forgotten lately it's Wait, enough. really? And it got us down a rabbit hole of Zen Moment as a perk, yep. just how infrequently it rolls on hand cannons. What caused you to pick up Not Forgotten again, Drew? The plague of SMGs. <laughs> um, and honestly, it's just like, against SMGs, I feel like they have such a... Um, not always like high margin of error, or like not that they have a high margin of error, but like when you're using a hand cannon, you pretty much have to three tap. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, like you don't have a choice. Like, unless you're obviously using your cover well, which as you should be ideally, you know, with a hand cannon, but that's just not, you know, always going to happen where mm -hmm. some, you know, an SMG player pushes into uh, you into a scenario where you're not able to do that. Anyways, it's just a hand cannon that has a larger margin of error with the two head one body mm -hmm. um to ensure that you're 
like nearly always or at least have even better chances of making sure you hit that optimal time to kill to try and trade with an SMG. So that's why I've been really uh, liking it. And it's just like, it's my favorite hand cannon. I, it's like the most consistent, I think, one on the controller. I love that it gets the precision bonus. I can use it with stompies and squeeze out just a little bit of AE stat as well. Um, I just love it. It's just, it's you, just my favorite hand cannon. Weren't you one of the first people in the world to acquire that hand cannon? Or am I, I won't take full credit. Just my team, myself, Cam... Who joined us? Was it Sides that joined us? It had to be Sides. It was, was Forsaken. Sides, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I assume it was. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. But yeah. I think we you were one of the first there people out there to get that hand cannon. Not even make a video on it. Like, because some people made a video on it when they didn't even have, like, they just kind of jumped on somebody else's account. Uh, which, you know, nothing wrong with that. We're over here Today, like 30 but, hours without but, sleep. Like, <laughs> yeah, you guys yeah, are, this you hand cannon is pretty good. Yeah. Our, our goal, we had a joke. It. <laughs> yeah. OSK might have Our been joke. first to get it, actually. OSK was the first. You might have been the that first. That was console. To get it, was it? No, not gonna I talk remember. too much about like the differences between the totally, you know, yeah, for sure. But the yeah. matchmakings, but we had forty five minute queues sometimes, so it was just like it was pain watching them get game after game, yeah, and we're yeah. over there in the gutters. I remember that. I think. I mean, I, I don't think it matters at this point, but I think OSK got Luna's Howl. First. Oh, you might be right about remember. that. Yeah. I, I even remember, only reason I remember is because I was so intrigued to see like what other people thought of the hand cannon. He was like using better devils for a while, even after he got Luna's. He's right. like, yeah, it's not my thing. And then people, I think, figured out after. I think you're right. I think, he, I think he learned later. It was like, oh, there's another one even beyond that? Yeah, it was it was pretty exciting times. Exciting times. Those were exciting times. We yeah. kept going as a meme because we're like, we are maxing this shit out, <laughs> and then we're going meme. to the raid. Yeah, the joke for us was we wanted to go do the last wish or the day one raid with it. This is to go even further so, beyond. But anyways, going back on topic, it was sure, like sure, sure. it's just it's my favorite hand cannon. It's um, I I wish it it pains me when I can't use it in trial. Like I wish yeah. I I wish I could use it i wish it was an exotic version of it if that's what if that's what it takes hmm. i wish i just love how accurate it is i love the the two head one body thing i think it's amazing it's an interesting idea it's, maybe it's maybe like they'll bring it back with target thing. lock i know? love 180s as well target <laughs> howl target howl you know target howl <laughs> like i don't know if a lot of people like that recoil pattern but like i really love the recoil pattern of the 180s and not forgotten and this is kind of where Cam mentioned we went into this, you know, rabbit hole of Zen moment. But the reason I like it so much because is because I like weapons with sights, like like the BXR, like the Forerunner, and Not Forgotten, uh, maybe other 180s that I feel like I can have a really really clear picture of like what's happening to the crosshairs. So with traditional hand cannons, it kind of recoils up and you know around a little bit, and I I really really don't like that. Um, I think because Rose feels off because of that. A lot yeah, of like I, I just feel like when I get flinched, that. I can't perceive the flinch. I I can't see where my crosshair is actually going to correct for that. Like it it really just puts me off. So I love um, not forgotten and you know other weapons that have that really really clear sights that don't move around or deviate too much. Um. So the other the where this went into Zen moment is that we I was thinking or myself and camera thinking like man like you know why is it I love like the way this gun recoils, why does it feel like it's so clear? Um, and Cam was like, "Well, what does it have on it?" I'm like, "Well, it has Zen moment, but that that's a throwaway. Like everyone nah. knows that's, that's a throwaway perk." Um, and we were like, "We, were, I think Cam mentioned." When on Light like, oh, GG what it looked up what had Zen moment, sure enough, yeah. Ostringer did. Drew takes it for a spin and is like, "Okay, maybe that's the secret sauce." <laughs> it's, yeah. it's 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 your visual and actual recoil to being lessened, dude. It's actually pretty sweet yeah it's like i've very much undervalued that perk until i like, can give you know kind of poked uh and and made us think about it and and got that insight like it's very very good i crafted so now it goes thing, full like, circle like, back to like rose for example i was telling fallout explosive is the move why because it realistically can flinch m and k smg off of their ttk <laughs> it's, it's the only thing that can do it I mean, there's point. one gun in the game that has both Zen moment and explosive payload. It's the last push <laughs> hand cannon. So, yeah. 
stop and think about it for a second. What are the, I mean, since the beginning of time, okay, what are the top two exotic scout rifles? In PvP? Yep. Jade, Jade Rabbit, right? Yep, and? That one? Mida I only said that because there's another one on it. Not Mida. I was going to say Mida or DMT. Nope. Mida was the original, but... Mida was the OG. I mean, I, I'll leave DMT, but I was going to say, you know, yeah. in that class is Polaris. Oh, yeah, they, Polaris is pretty... What, what, what do they both have? Play. What do they both have? Are they both Heiko and Zen they Moment? Both have Zen, they both have Zen Moment. Yeah, you're right. They both do have Zen. That is accurate. So, as far as dueling, that's a huge difference. So... Anyway, it's crazy that we've had all these different hand cannons come in the game, and maybe Spare comes into the game, and yet I'm over here salivating at a Last Wish hand cannon to use on controller. <laughs> crazy. Oh, yeah, Cammy, you're still yeah, doing we, the controller. Yeah, we actually got thing. it. How, how is that experiment going, Cammy? Is it, is I'm it really still bad at it at this point, or are you just <laughs> like? <laughs> I mean, I can I can play it. I can play I can play it at ascendant comp with whatever it throws at me, and we can, sure. we can do okay. But it's night and day. Like my chat lets me know when I switch. My team lets me know when I switch. I was playing my alt account today, yeah. and they even let me know when I switch on the Steam comments. It's really Normally, funny. it's just like cheater. <laughs> and now they're like normal controller player. I'm like, come on. <laughs> um. By the way, just before I forget, uh, do we are we all in agreement that at some point in the future in Lightfall we get a we get Benj on the show to talk about 180 RPM hand cannons? Sure, yeah. But he, here's He's the here's the thing about to make them work. Here's the thing about 180s, dude. He's like, been donning the posterity recently. Like uh, he has. I'm yeah. I'm not gonna deny because mm. here's the deal: they heavily rely on damage perks, dude. Yeah, the .67. Yeah. If you can get kill clip going, if you can get um, golden tricorn going, MKC going, yeah, they shred. But you got to get there first, dude. You know, it's funny because I played a game today, and uh, somebody was using the epitaph, dude. I I kid you not. Six times straight, he didn't get off his fourth bullet. Like I almost clipped all of it, all the duels to be like, yeah, one eighties are insane. Literally can't even get off his final bullet because I'm out TTKing him three shots, right? So that's my that, hot take. I think optimal matters. I don't like op adaptive pulses. I don't like one eighty hand cannons. I'm I'm well, with you, Cam. I had a little I had a brief moment with like a lot of one eighties, right? Like I love I mean, admittedly, I love the one eighties. I wish they were better. So, um, but but that was when all, all the range bands bands were together, Drew. Like that time that you what? were using them. Now, dude, the 180s get eaten alive by everything, man. Uh, so. I don't think range is a big issue for me. Uh, I, I what stops me from using 180s right now is SMGs. Like you just can't keep up with the TTK. I enjoyed 180s most um, when in the 120 meta they were very good because they were matching the optimal. But my approach to 180s is like, I like, I think, I don't know. It's got to be between posterity and epitaph. I actually, the Frontiers, the new one, the Iron Banner Frontiers one. Cry? Pretty good too. Frontiers Cry, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, that one's really, really good as well. But epitaph is really good because I think the kind of mentality I have, if I was, I, I, I still don't mind going against 140s with 180s. Because you can like kind of flinch them off and Epitaph has high cal as in addition to some like pretty good range, good perks. So like you go all in and on the flinch and you kind of just it, it it's not great that you kind of have to put them on hitting the three tap, but they they aren't going to hit the three tap every time. So I think it's still usable against 140s. Um but uh yeah, against SMGs, like there's just no hope. It's not just SMGs. I tried it's, using it recently. A lot of SMGs are strong, one. so Titans use peacekeepers oh, to use is. SMGs. And if you're a Titan, you're ten resilient. So it just exacerbates using 180s and makes it even worse. It's um, I'm not gonna three tap with a damage perk now or whatever because they're ten resilience. It's hey, awesome. Hey Drew, let's play a fun little yep. game right now. Sure. Uh, I want you to guess. Actually, anyone can hear. Anyone here can guess, but no cheating. All right. Uh, you know the top five most used weapons in trials over the weekend now to be fair the weapons most used in any given trials weekend is going to depend heavily on the map right so if keep it that was widow's mind. court huh? it would have been different if it was widow's would have been, been, been a little different but you know we got a, it was endless veil right which is a, which is a relatively smallish 
map i would say for trials it's a map for ants compared to what we've been playing sure yeah which i will gladly take over the big maps but okay number five fifth most used weapon in trials this past weekend what is it rose no time to explain it is no time to explain well done drew did you see this anywhere or are you just you're just in the zone right now i saw it once but we're gonna see how well i remember he Fair lived enough. through it with Let's see 400 the oh, and, I, and i had an existential crisis this weekend going through it as well <laughs> with four hundred and sixty thousand kills that was no time to explain uh next in fourth place with five hundred and five thousand kills what what weapon rose two for two rose is the fourth most used weapon in trials okay I was going to give you a hint, but yeah, he doesn't even need it. It's not a game if you know everything. <laughs> I, I'm testing my memory here. I okay, was, I did next. Not think I was going to be right. 531,000 kills, the third most used weapon in Trials this weekend. What's the King's Fall Sniper this. name? That's my guess. I don't know. The King's Fall Sniper is the Defiance of Yasmin. That one. It's a good guess. Cool guy. Matador. Drew? Ooh, that's a good one. Oh, uh, mm, I want to say Matador. It is the Matador. Drew is Drew is three for three right fire. now. Yeah, I was only off. Cool you guy. can seal the deal from here because there's only two. Because there's only two obvious. weapons left, and you know what they are. All right, oh, okay. <laughs> number two. Wait, do I know the second one? You come you do, on, do, Drew. Do. What what yes, spawned do. this discussion topic? They're a little aggressive. <laughs> Drew being like, oh man, the SMGs are kind of a problem. Okay, number two with seven hundred. And 40,000 kills, jumping up from 531. Remember, number three was a shotgun. It was a, it was a special weapon. Number two. You know I, what I the have, top two are. I you just one, might not know the order. <laughs> we just don't know have, which one is above the other. I have I, one question for you. Yeah, what's up? Does it have 16 zoom? <laughs> it, it does have 16 <laughs> zoom, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, weird. The cool guy already knows. It is the Taraba, the Taraba SMG. Uh, at number two with 740,000. And, okay, so keep in mind, 530 at number three, 740 at number two. The number one most used weapon in trials with 1.6 million, technically if you round up, 1.7 million kills. What was second place? What was Se second, second place? Was terrible. And how many kills though? 740,000. Yikes. And the number so one, seven hundred to one point so a million seven, kills more. Seven hundred forty thousand to one point seven million is the Icolo. That's like a million different. SMG yes. <laughs> version three. Your number oh, yeah. one most used PVP trials weapon. That gun is just yep. absurdly good, and it hits one of those rare things for me. Like normally for me, I have weapons that I enjoy on controller. I have weapons that I enjoy on M and K. It's, it's very rare. That you get a weapon that I thoroughly enjoy using on both. And Icolos SMG is that weapon. For I'm me. in the same boat. I'm like, 100%. it's great on controller. It's an upgrade on MK. It's so good, dude. Like, I can't even handle it. Like, for you me, know, it, sidearms, complete opposite. I'm like, I won't even touch it on MK. Don't even touch it on Meanwhile, MK. Meanwhile, controller. Yeah, drank yes, on controller. Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sidearms are pretty, that... pretty tough right now, too, man. Yeah, so I'm surprised that they didn't break the top 10 or whatever. Like, Drang's not on there? No, Drang's not on the top 10. Nope. I think they're a sleeper right now. A sidearm but sleeper. For the yeah. sake of discussion, I know we mentioned that like the maps matter, but mm -hmm. if you look at I think the last four weeks, which is a pretty good mix of ranges, and uh -huh. is for, to refresh Endless Vale, pretty close quarters, Radiant Cliffs. I think some would associate that map being a a mix of engagements. Got it. If some it wasn't with, zones. You know, I think it's ones. pretty rangy. I would yeah, say. So, yeah. So yeah, I think it leans on rangy. However, it does have some pretty tight areas as well, you know, with the, the that one corridor in the middle mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. people fight at. Eternity, which also would, you know, has a mix. It definitely has some short ranges, but I think most associate that as a long range map. And then Wormhaven, which is like kind of a jack of all trades, I think. Aikilos SMG was in the top three in all of those. Interesting. And by interesting, I mean, I am not shocked at all. <laughs> Damn, I'm not shocked either. It's so good, dude. Yeah. If you said every map is an SMG map, I would agree. Yeah. Um, yep. I still wouldn't use 180 RPM hand cannons unless 
I had a beast five out of five roll with a extra damage dealing perk like kill clip. I was and two, I was playing on controller, and three, I was in a meta where I would not get absolutely pecker slapped by a crafted Icolos SMG. I would not I would not go anywhere near them. Yeah, so it's it's so it's so crazy on the high end of those things. Um as we've discussed, when you add zoom to a weapon. Yeah. It creates less visual and actual recoil, essentially more stability, right? So, you know, you saw that with multi mock, especially, you know, these SMGs that can get outside of their band, you know, it, you're almost you're you're rewarded for making it the best it could be. Right? Because <laughs> yeah. you're not looking into stability at all, um, but you're artificially adding this ability with the zoom factor, with a rangefinder. Just it's just it's absolutely wild how that goes. And like Taraba is running around with an auto rifle. It has the same zoom level as Summoner, dude. And reckless or and chroma rush. It right? has <laughs> no business being a sixteen so, zoom. It's so just and, wild. And, you know, if uh, you know if anybody is listening and wants to like it, there's if you've been using Taraba, you know, right? If you know, you know. <laughs> they know. But like, you know, if if you were to use um let you what was the uh why am i blanking um i got you bro crucible smg out of bounds right out of bounds, if you're to yep. use out of bounds non range finder then go to terabot like the feel of it is extremely <laughs> different because that zoom man um in care controller like doesn't matter where you are yeah uh, that's how much of an impact all that stuff is it's literally the scene in spider-man 2 where he's like putting on the glasses and they're like they're terrible and he takes them off and then like it's like oh my mm -hmm. god my vision is epic like when he you know, it's just another classic Spider-Man reference. I mean, all and, that and, being said, I still think Drang's on the same level as Oculus SMG. It's just not dude, represented so numbers wise. Yeah, since yeah, it's uh, items are up there, its okay. zoom is down. It, it it it's not as good, but it's still great. If y'all haven't ran into Devil's Ruins, y'all are lucky. Yeah, Devil's oh, Ruins nice. probably Devil's Ruins so fun. One of my favorite. And three burst, man. Ever. The trespassers nuts too. So good. So um, good. I think sidearms have are also insanely insanely strong it's the same play style just the input device changes a little bit a little bit yeah. <laughs> i want to hear drew's thoughts on something you know okay. we, we we talked about 180s Are you sure? i do <laughs> we talked about 180s um you know we talked about smgs yeah. um ranges um how well and everybody really um it's almost time for a redefinition of effective range and range 40 meters and in you know um so much so like auto rifles struggled for a little bit because a lot of things overlapped it right now smgs you know are, are kind of getting in, into a, a space the upper end of a hand cannon hitting 37 38 are the ones that are being used mostly right mostly um 180s max at about 28 meters right 29 with without crazy um you know range altering perks like a range finder um, mm -hmm. But everything's overlapping. But once you hit 40, like pulse domination and everything in between 30 to 40, pulses still compete really well, especially with a 0.67, right? So uh, there's so much within that space, 40 meters and in, a lot of things overlap each other. Um, and the outliers are being used like an Icolos SMG, like a, a max range finder palindrome because of that, because it's not really, you know, it covers pretty much everything. So... What do you guys think about the current ranges of our archetypes compared to, let's say, a pulse? Every range feels like SMG range. I know Every... that's like my like that's like my sarcastic response. There's a break point for me <laughs> where I decide not to use an SMG and I go no time, and then there's a break point where I just go scout. But like double primary uh, pulse SMG is like a top three loadout, right? Would anybody else disagree? With I, that? I think it, it's viable. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think that right now, if I had to be serious, like like not completely sarcastic, it does feel like every... I feel like there's two ranges in my mind. There's no time range and there's SMG range. <laughs> and you just right? you, like, you, you move accordingly. That way? Like, that's how I, that's how <laughs> that's I feel. How I that's, how I agree. And right that, that's kind of like the basis of the question there of like, um, you know, because it's either or and things that you use against those things get shredded by them. There's not Maybe. even a sweet spot to fight those two things. It's like if they have both, there's nowhere to be. <laughs> oh yeah, and that's a real loadout. No, that's a real loadout. I see a lot of really good players, especially in Rumble, like that run that, and it's like it's real. Yeah, dude. Like no time, Michaelis. 
Type three. Forerunner Drang used to be in the discussion, but since Titans can tank that three tap, it kind yeah. of fell off. So, I mean, that was kind of like the basis of the question there, of where I was trying to get. I mean, not so elegant as Drew, but, you know, <laughs> just the, the redefinition of those ranges, like, I hope that they do look at them uh, because what they're doing is they're picking out one at a time outliers. Like, it's not just the no time recoil, dude. It's not just the no time recoil, right? Um, 0.67 uh, oh, is just strong. The other period. high impacts, yes. I started using a 22 zoom legal action too. A uh, frenzy it's, surplus, rampage, rampage surplus. Rampage is insane. Wild. It's insane. Yeah. It's more. It, it's it, it's more than you would ever need on any map. <laughs> yeah, so, I I think that, and I I kind of I don't know. I, I I hope that some people didn't take it the wrong way when I when I kind of like suggested this or tried to bring this topic up, like you know when we when we were talking with Merck uh, a little while ago. But it, to me, in my opinion, it doesn't feel like weapons are, like ranges are like scaled to a lot of the maps, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like you can, like SMG range, like feels, you know, you know, just not to be totally sarcastic, but it, it feels like, a, like a lot. Like you can put pressure with an SMG from, if you're not doing optimal damage, you're still putting a very good amount of pressure on them while closing the gap, especially if, if you have peacekeepers on, mm -hmm. um, you know, on on a lot of engagements on maps. Yeah, dude, we're, say, we're, we're five and a half years know, in. We just had trials on a beta map. <laughs> right? And yeah, I, I, I mean, like I, I was going to say in the case of Pulse, is like, yeah, you can make the argument for like, you know, do you ever really need a scout? I, I do think that there's an, it, it depends on the pulse. I, I personally think the high impact pulses in particular are like um, really, really strong. And then no time is going to lead the charge of those. Couple maps. That's why I said there's like SMG, no time, and then special cases scout. Yeah, but I think that a lot of like the majority of players are like, at least from what I can tell and based on like what people choose to use is like, if it's a scout map, it's a no time map. It is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a lot when of I think scouts come out, it's 3v3 elimination, and you're looking for an off radar angle to just delete somebody with like a box breathing scout or something like that. A hung jury. Ooh. I've seen a lot of suggestions yeah, even to, like... to bring them to 34 per crit. So 204 burst. Here's the thing, though. Mm. A lot of the players that beat me with scouts, they don't start on it. They start on snipe and they switch to the scout when they're out of ammo. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, I was gonna say that sidearms are in that same kind of I think like league with SMGs as well, as far as range that you know sometimes I'm playing and I and I question I'm like, dude, I'm trying to space myself with as much as the map is giving me, and I understand that there's going to be some corridors and times where I cannot, mm -hmm. but like there's other times where I'm like, Yeah, I feel like I am making use of this long hallway. And then <laughs> it's a like, slide and a shoulder charge away. And then yeah, <laughs> it's like you know what I mean? So it's like I don't know, but at the same time, I can empathize with the frustration that, like, you know, no, the high impact pulse is like they, you know, they really do feel like, are you ever gonna need more range than they provide? <laughs> you know, <laughs> so as an observation, I think the player base at large has really learned to play Titan, the way that I always thought it was strong. In what way is that? And that's good to see, like using the barricade to start cutting space, shoulder charge as their movement tool. Not throwing it away on just an, an odd killer there, here sure. or there. Yeah. And using both of those tools to make every part of the map SMG distance. Uh, cool Cheese back in the day really pushed for that kind of play style. Mm. Okay, that's interesting. I'm glad we're talking about this stuff. Because you know, Strand is going to change a lot of the engagements. It's going to. It is. Period. It, it will. Um, we have the same map, so for yeah, the it's... better, I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, uh, that's one of the things I'm going to be like, on the side looking at you know how how you know the new weapons coming in with our new <clears throat> subclasses new ways uh -huh. to play um if or how they're gonna adjust things so we'll we'll just see i guess we will um should we really quickly we went down a deep rabbit hole there which i mean i had a good time i had a had great a time. time on that rabbit hole bro yeah. <laughs> that was good uh do we want to quickly just 30,000 foot view the other two strand classes yeah. and just like what are just any thoughts on them at all titan berserker any green, uh, green striker green yeah striker. keep going 
Keep going strikes. <laughs> Moving on. Do you think so? Are you kind of on board with how everyone thinks it's kind of I, like no. it's not no. looking because the the initial reaction from a lot of people in the community was that automatically the new strand titan was the worst of the three they just think it's another generic cookie cutter titan i mean i see where they're coming from but i'm also a firm believer in like i'm not going to comment on it i mean i can make an initial thought but i'm not going to make a hard carved in stone comment until i get my hands in the dough you know like i want to feel it out it could be cracked it could be it probably will be it'll probably be the best super just like behemoth uh Honestly, with a lot of the strand stuff, even if they do preview it a little bit in the way that they do, mm -hmm. and even for me, for Hunter, like I can't really speak to the other ones because like I'm just the hardest one trick ever. But like, <laughs> I I just don't understand enough of like the nuance or like what it's really going to bring to the table. So it's really hard for me to have an opinion on anything. Like even like I'll look at like the Titan or something because I I don't quite understand what the little synergies are and like that sure the, yeah. the kind of you know things that it's like really bringing and how it's gonna play and like it, it's just so hard to tell so i so, I, I resonate with your point so dude what, what what's it called suspend yeah. um yeah okay yeah. so uh, when i saw that immediately i'm like are we getting ready to have freeze breakout 2.0 because remember early stasis when you got frozen, you were done. Unfortunately, I remember that. Yeah. You were done. Like you <laughs> yeah, couldn't yeah. do anything. And, and then they made a change. There. And then they made a change. And they're like, yeah. you know what? You'll just be frozen for a second. We'll unlock you. Cool. Like so the suspension, like you see the the, the dude doing like the old halo fall, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like <laughs> I really hope that's one of the things I'm I am concerned about. You know, if it could be spammed, you know, just suspending people there and you have to break out of it. Or even if it's as long mm. as uh it could be as long as a freeze. Who knows? I but hadn't thought about that. Th th yeah, that's going to be a thing. <laughs> it looks like it's going to be a thing at least. Uh, so some comments on Titan. I yeah. think that the player base is starting to really understand and thrive with Titan now at base. Maybe Berserker isn't going to be as much of a problem. I always feel like they either juice the subclass or they give it some broken ass exotic to make up for the player base, so, like not <laughs> latching exotic, onto Titan. That exotic throws a barricade that shoots out three of those things that can suspend people. Yeah, so yeah. that's why I brought that up. Jeffrey's horns. That's gonna be really crazy. Fun. Yeah, I think that's crazy. Any any concern over woven mail? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Actually, thank you, Cammy. <laughs> maybe. Uh, if you're, we'll see. Unfamiliar, we need to see how much mitigation it is. Yeah, it's you kind of get like a strand overshield. Kind of, you get what you get extra damage protection all over your body, but not in your head, right? You get right. damage resistance to your body. Damage resists, not an overshield. Okay, good, good correction to make. I mean, you can have an overshield and just play with a void titan. So, why not a meta team comp? Have a hunter I mean, with you. Honest, throw a healing like, grenade. I, I'm less concerned about like woven mail itself as an ability. I mean, maybe because we don't, we haven't exactly seen how frequently we're going to be able to get that. I was more concerned about the hunter exotic. Like that one. Which one is like, that one again? I like, like that's the one that I believe gives the. I thought I thought it gives a woven mail when you when you oh, grapple. Is it? Yes. The yeah the hunter helmet. Is uh, that what it did? Did I get that one correct? Oh man, I cannot remember. I do remember when I was reading the descriptions for all the new exotics. I looked at the hunter one and was like, hmm, that seems like it may be pretty good can't remember oh i wish i could remember the name of it too i know exactly what it looks like i'm picturing it in the trailer that's right what now. it does though right i think it said like also flinch resistance isn't it like is that grappling it gives, like i'm trying to remember grappling gives woven mail right isn't that what it is is that what it is and like, a hunter can grapple I a lot i think that's what apparently i want to go look. So in other words Here, it, oh, in the it chat in our live chat right now playing. the exotic. hunter exotic gives woven mail and reduced flinch after grapple yeah that just to sounds me, like, like the that's... answer to me that seems pretty yeah, darn like, good. I'm I'm con I'm more concerned about that because I don't like that. I, I I don't like the combination of like a high mobility movement giving you, you know, resi damage resistance of some sort. Like okay, you're not okay. only you're not high mobility, you're tanky, you're both, and it's like you're already <laughs> harder to hit. That's the point of evasive well, would, movement. Would you but rather it be harder, hit, like throwing down your barricade, huh? <laughs> getting an overshield 
How hard does it need to I be? Mean, I'm why, <laughs> I mean, like, I was going to say, like, but why? I mean, at least it's not a combination of both. At least you're sitting, you know, sitting out there in the animation. Yeah, I'm with Drew on this one. Like, conceptually, like, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. If you're free using easy, extreme free, mobility, free why are you things. more tanky? Shouldn't you be less tanky yeah, to a, make that risk reward? Wild. Yeah, it's exactly. Wild thinking about that. Yeah. And, like, what's stopping me from just going, I don't know, let's say, like, at the start of a game, assuming it just works like we think, I'll just grapple, and now I'm not only I would assume getting to mid faster, I'm also harder to kill. So I'm just gaining map faster. Right? I wonder if it's gonna have a. I mean, conceptually, that's how it works in my head. If right? it's gonna have a timer, I'm right, or a decay? Thing. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know. know. To me, it, like in a vacuum, though, like that's what it sounds like, and that seems here's what crazy this sounds if I'm like. Man. I'm gonna predict correctly. the meta right now. It's gonna be Rat King and tube grenades, and you're gonna woven mail into all gunfights. <laughs> it might be that actually like no joke yeah that's um i can't so, wait to play it's gonna know. it's gonna be crazy okay really i'm more quick. concerned about woven mail in that context than anything uh i have to go check on something real quick but while i'm gone please talk about the warlock brood weaver and any predictions and thoughts you might have on that i'll be back in one minute go design wise we're Kind of getting a summoner class, which is really interesting. I don't know how that's going to operate in PvP, though. I don't have a. Do you want to hear the abilities as a quick yes. recap of them? So this says abilities, because I have this up. Needlestorm. We have a cloud of strand before shattering it, causing a hailstorm of piercing missiles that detonate upon impact. I believe I'm going to assume that's the super. Yes. It just says yeah. needlestorm. Uh, arcane needle is another ability throw a strand needle that tracks your target and unravels them and i believe we had a guide on what those little keywords mean i don't remember off the top of my head but uh and then it looks like this is an aspect weaver's call when casting a rift weave three threadlings on the ground in front of you and then i believe this is another aspect mind spun invocation empower your grenades with additional broodweaver specific qualities i'm back yeah so we don't know we don't know with how uh, yeah like you it's know, hard so again it's, it's hard to tell i would assume like you know let, let's remember you know stasis when it came out it was very very obvious that the warlock is the freeze of them right mm -hmm. yeah very very obvious that the titan is the shatter of them so i, I would assume that they're gonna you know play strand kind of the same way i mean Right, so Hunter's the Grappler. Which is the Suspender? Is that Warlock or Titan? It'd probably be and Titan. What's the third verb? Third probably uh, uh, whatever Unravel is. Yeah, so, like, Unravel, right? Is that, I believe that a was a good anime the opening. <laughs> <laughs> um, Suspend, Unravel, Sever. That's it. What is Sever. Uh, a severed enemy is less capable of affecting the material world, reducing their damage output. Reduced yeah, damage so output. Reduced damage Overload? Output. Is that what? Yeah, I guess. Right? Yeah, so like the, the one above that, the what is it? The un. I, I don't have it in front. Yeah, unravel. Like I, I hope that that works with necrotic grip, man. Hmm. It sounds that cool. Sounds dangerous. It sounds it like arc well. That does sound actually very dangerous. Um, okay, cool. We uh, we did get a lot of uh, questions on Twitter, many of them uh, from people who confusedly believe that we work for Bungie. Uh, thanks to everyone who submitted questions this week. I do appreciate all of you. I went through. We have a we, like we got a bunch, but I I kind of cherry picked a few of my my uh, my favorites to to end up the show here. You guys want me to read a few of these questions? Sure. Cool. Okay, here we go. One from Friggin' Duck. Based on everything we've seen of the sandbox changes coming, what are you most excited about trying on launch? I'm going to say aerial play. Okay. I want to see that vision and how it plays. It's so tempting. Like, I do want in PvE, I think on the PvE side... I really want to goof around with Warlock because, like, the Threadlings look really funny, like, being, like, the minion guy. I'm sure there's probably a lot of really fun build crafting potential with the Broodweaver. 
But for PvP, yeah, it's it's got to be Spider-Man Hunter, dude. Like it just looks really like if it if it plays out the way it's playing out in my head, like it, it's just going to be really enjoyable. I don't know, that would be my answer. I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to be running around with suppressor nades and collective obligation. <laughs> Just all right. Shoot another duck out of the sky. <laughs> Where is your grapple, Hunter? Where is your grapple? <laughs> the fun killer, Cammy. Okay, Drew. Any any particular thought there? Um, I feel like this is the one of the first times where I'm kind of just open to whatever. I'm not particularly like incredibly like overexcited for anything, but I'm I'm okay. anticipating. Um. Having a good time with the 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 hunter, of course, as of we course. said. Uh, I'm just kind of at the point where I'm like I'm open to trying, you know, whatever, whatever uh, comes to the sandbox. Sure. I think there's going to be a lot, so maybe I'm a little overwhelmed. That's why. <laughs> Fair enough. Question. Also, the oh, entire mod system, dude. I mean, I'm, oh yeah, the, the entire oh, mod. That's that's like like completely a, prepared. That was it. Yeah, I, that's, that was the one. That's I'm really hyped for that. Completely forgot about that. Yeah. Dude, we dropped yeah, the ball. So, there's boys. so much. Yeah, uh, we really did the drop the ball. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's so much, dude. Yeah, it's that just blew one. my mind. Yep, that's the one. <laughs> I don't really yeah, think we did drop the ball. I just assume all of us are just gonna do the same thing we were already Dude, doing in the new system. Yeah. I feel like when I'm asked questions like that, I I just blank. I'm just like, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. I'm excited. Something. Yeah, sure. And like, you know, yeah. So that that's the thing that what cool guys said is is definitely like the loadout system and the whole uh, the mod system, that whole revamp. I'm like super Very excited hyped for that yeah, they yeah. also said a number of those mods are getting cheaper so like imagine if you could do hand cannon and sniper targeting now right yeah couldn't do that before unless with, without help from the artifact so yeah here's a question from zara nesson is gambit doomed <laughs> yes <laughs> that's fun <laughs> I think it is doomed. I mean, conceptually, they can't really land on an identity. Who is it for? For me, I have Gambit merch, okay? I have Gambit <laughs> shirts. It's I have I actually for cool do. guy. Only yeah. him. I uh, I feel like I'm at the point right now where, like, Gambit was fun. I did enjoy it for a period of time. I think they've tried to, like, kind of zhuzh it up a few times and it's like been like like yo man new gambit and it's like ah, it's fun for like a week and i'm like yeah who who fucking i was a gambit anymore? fan <laughs> while it was like on the upward trend and as soon as they just changed it to casualify it it kind of got worse yeah i agree and i've been just hoping it goes back but i don't know if they're ever gonna pull that trigger again i'm i'm literally at the point though i'm not even kidding where like if they just leave gambit alone forever and they take all the time and effort and energy and money that they would have put towards helping Gambit and just put it to PvP instead, I'd be a hundred percent okay with that. I know not everyone is going to agree with that. I know there are actually people out there who do enjoy Gambit. Uh, sorry that our opinions brother. differ, <laughs> brother. But um, uh, yeah, that's just yeah. I'm I'm fine if they just kind of if they just if they just drift away from Gambit gently. <laughs> the weapon team. I think like Gambit was uh, such a. It's always such a cool idea in practice. But, it was. Or, sorry, in theory. Yeah. I think it's a Just fresh idea for Destiny practice. It was to compete fresh. against everything else on the market. It's so unique. You know, though, I, I always envisioned with something like Gambit was... Uh, I always thought, like, PvEVP in Destiny would have been something more akin to, like, you know, Titanfall having, like, the little AI oh, dudes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Am I like too? Am I? I don't know if I'm dating myself with like Titanfall did, did that. But I remember playing the first one and it had like the little AI guys around the map that you can still uh, get points off of. Uh, if anyone remembers like Warzone and Halo Five, sure, it have like all those like drop ins from like the different like enemy factions, like the Covenant. I mean, we got a whatnot. turret drop in and Iron Banner this. <laughs> oh my god! So like, but it was still like, it was still at its like a pvp activity but it had like all these different occurrences and parts of the game that had to do with like you know the pve enemies as well and it it augmented it you know a decent amount that's always mm -hmm. what i thought pve vp would be but if they want to speak I mean, more to the it's... pve side all they have to do yeah. is put a leaderboard up for speed runs and it's the same gambit crowd 
that is interested in the PVE side of Gambit. Not a bad idea. Three more questions. From uh, Distortions, is minus 50 AE on Stompies too much? It is. I think it is. I th But I... I dude, when they nerfed that, they they've been working on you. You, you guys are gonna see this upcoming week why stoppies were nerfed. You're gonna see it with Strand. That might be that's, accurate. That's why it was nerfed. I I do think that the minus fifty goes. I'm so torn on this man because like I've I think, been using stoppies a ton lately on Hunter, and God, it is just so fun. Even with the minus fifty penalty it's so fun i just love them so much i just feel like it's a, i don't know i i do i'll i'll say that i don't envy bungie you know what i mean because i i yeah. do feel for people that minus 50 is a lot but like when you start if you were to start rolling back nerfs on zombies it would take very little they're still <laughs> the number one pick like, right now yeah even with the minus 50 um, yeah, it, that, it would take very little buffing to push Stompies back to like 99% PvP. I used them before they even enhanced so, the control jump. Dude, I used them on so pure good. high jump. They're so good. The The original AE system, when that came out mm -hmm. uh, with Stompies, like there was a negative impact with its negative, right? So like it's one of those like on the curve, it actually just like got infinitely worse. Like they, they did feel terrible. Now this new system, uh, even building in, uh, you can't get them to zero. Um, a little bit higher but you know even just those base changes that they did they feel a hundred times better so i i do agree yeah with... that's what i was gonna say Go ahead, like Joe. i was gonna ask like the base ae that now that or like didn't <laughs> someone told me i don't know how true this is is 10 now like 10 ae now the baseline for like what Icarus accuracy was or 20. something like I can't that. Remember. 20. 20. So which is, is it 20? It, it's it's basically what your weapon is. All the weapons give 13 to 20. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. like and but on the low end as a whole, like it it's better than it used to be. So I don't know. It's like way too hard for me to say like was it is that too much or not? Should you be able to like build out of that? It's hard to tell because I think right now it doesn't feel absolutely terrible without like it's a clear downside. Like mm -hmm. no one's denying that it, it is most definitely a clear downside. But I think that you can still hit body shots like pretty regularly if that's the trade off yeah, you're sure. to get yeah. for that exotic. Um, that being said, though, I think overall, like I can't really like I'm gonna have to go with what Fallout said and like you know I don't envy Bungie on this. I do not. <laughs> um, yeah. Because like, I also don't think there's just like enough. Like, if you were to say okay, you can, you know, build or make it a value you can build out of or you can build out of it. You know, is there enough ways to actually build out of it? Is Does there need to be more ways to build into it to, that like would be really, really heavy investment at the cost of something else that's mm -hmm. tremendously or like really valuable to like get you out of the minus 50 or like should it just be raised? I don't know. I feel like there's just so many questions with that. There's I'm not sure. I'm okay with them completely reworking it because even with the minus 50, it still seems like a no-brainer pick for a lot of maps and team setups. It's still pretty good. I do think that minus 50 is a little bit harsh, though. But again, I do not envy Bungie. I'll, I'll let them handle that situation. I am not a game dev. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. Uh, from Ant NY Live. What is everyone's favorite weapon from the last year of Destiny? Mm. Last year. When did the BX Shark come out? That, was, that, <laughs> that wasn't came the last out year, before right? Witch Queen. Yeah. <laughs> right. Cloud Strike that came out before Witch that's Queen. So, is that so <laughs> funny? Like, that's so funny. Yeah, it's, that's the 30th anniversary, I think. I was like, right I'm pretty sure it's been more than a year, right? That's so funny. <laughs> Let me check my dub. <laughs> Well, it doesn't, that question doesn't mean like the weapon Big had to come out in the last year. Maybe it's just something you used in the last year. Oh, is that what we're going with? Maybe you can I, answer can it do that one way each? if you want. No one's going to come knocking on your door if you answer the question the wrong way, Drew. Oh. Teraba. I mean, Teraba's pretty freaking hot. Hmm. Since switching back to controller, I don't have this on my main account, so I feel bad, but Peace Bond, Sidearm, Burst, Skulking Wolf, Peace Fire Bond. Banner. 
I might say I know it's, it's a terrible answer. I mean, Eichelos is really fun right Don't now. Don't do it. I know, I, but Don't but Rose, I was kind of like wishy washy on Rose Nine until years. I got my my four point five out of five roll. I am really enjoying it now. Feeling extra crispy with my Rose. Very much digging it. And the uh, the Callus really Callus Mini about. Tool for oh, for PVE. I enjoy the Callus Mini Tool. Kind of make the room go boom. It's really fun. I'm going with Exalted mm -hmm. Truth. Hmm, okay. Uh, and oh, Wilder, that, yeah. Wilder Flight. The double shot geo? Which one's that? Yeah, the double shot geo. Oh, okay. oh, I yeah, really I like that thing, dude. In I PvE. Like thing. What? I just don't have a good roll on it. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, I wonder what that's like. Oh, if we're talking <laughs> recent, though. That Heritage Slug is wild. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Off that's good. Yeah. By the way, here's a... Don't, don't answer this, but... Uh, just a quick follow-up on the Stompy discussion from Goku1144 in the chat. Again, don't answer. Just ponder. With skill-based matchmaking in the game, <laughs> why do Stompies need to be nerfed at all? I'm not answering. <laughs> Cammy picks, uh, pleads the fifth on that one. I just I saw that reply in the Twitch chat. It made me chuckle. Drew any other weapons other than the BXR? I had to say for one that was released this year. If you had to say one that was released I, this year. I could be blanking. Um, I think Exhausted Truth was a good choice. I don't know if it qualifies as favorite for me. Rose is another, another solid choice, but I'll go with the long arm. I really like that gun a lot more than I thought I would. Wait, which is I the long I ended up arm? getting... It, it's good on controller, you dude. You at home. DMT legendary. It's good oh, on DMT at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, got it. Yeah, so I like it for a few reasons. I ended up getting the hip fire explosive payload roll. Oh. Um, okay. So that's the that that hypothetically is like the best hip fire performance, and explosive payload counts as two hits for the origin trait, which if you hit four, four. hits, so that's two hits with. Explosive payload, two shots, I should say. Um, you get a few benefits, being, I think, uh, a bit of handling. It says 20 reload speed, uh, 0.9 times reload duration multiplier, and then a 5% reduced ADS movement speed penalty. So <laughs> it's been really fun to use that. I I honestly really, really like the damage profile of those like slow scouts. It feels like substantial. It's like you're using kind of a hand cannon. It feels like um, the, the hip D1. fire grip feels. What's up? It feels like the D one hard hitting hand cannons, like uh, first curse. Just thumping yeah, people. like uh, <laughs> I love that the the damage profile of these. It it feels great. Um, I also think that when compared to DMT, for some reason, and I admittedly have less stability on my roll of long arm twenty five stability versus like. My 42 stability on the DMT. I want to love the DMT and like sink so much time into it, but it's got this weird bounce after every shot that it does, even though I have so like a lot more stability that I don't feel is like, present on the long arm. That makes me enjoy the long arm a lot more. Hmm. So yeah, that's my highlight weapon. I okay. like that one a lot. Fair enough. Final question from Tw <laughs> Truth Truth Swans. English first language. How about that? What are each of your day one raid routines? Oh, I'm sorry. Is this raid routine or? Yes, it is. I'm guessing it is. Yeah. Day one raid routine before reset. Uh, what's your go-to caffeine source during the raid? And what is your post-raid clear meal of choice? Coffee to start, energy drinks late. Post-clear meal is sleep. You just go to sleep. <laughs> it's a You're big too tired of to sleep. <laughs> do you do anything when you wake up? Uh, eat. Immediately. <laughs> Dado does, uh, he has a tradition of having Wendy's after every raid, which I thought was kind of fun. I have a similar tradition, but I'll let cool guy go first. Uh, dude, I'll be real with you. I, I'm just happy to get on a raid team. Like, I don't really, my, my routine, in, it really in, involves finding a team. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. <clears throat> Drew, we got any uh, any raid routines or no? 
I'm, nothing tremendously out of the ordinary, like, you know, coffee before a raid, just make sure I have something to eat. Um, I, I guess the only thing that's kind of tradition is usually me and my girlfriend make chili. Just oh, super that's easy nice. meal prep or do some some sort of meal prep, like yeah. whether it's like a, I'll I like share having, your recipe. Uh, <laughs> I I like having some stuff on the healthier side. Yeah, like um like kale and tofu and stuff, and I, I love that stuff. And it's like I, I like eating that when I'm doing raids. So I guess I do that. Interesting. So you kind of go like light and healthy, and that, that's what you eat during the raid. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh. Anno and I, we have kind of like a pre-ritual, which is we make homemade chicken noodle soup before the raid. And then that way, like during the raid, really easy because all you have to do is just kind of ladle it into a bowl, reheat it up. Super great, nutritious meal to kind of keep you going during the raid. And then after the raid, I think after we've gone to bed and slept and feel really good, then the next day we do five guys, burgers and fries. Hell yeah. Hell to the yeah. That's my little routine so, there. Five guys fries. I got a good story for you. I always <laughs> thought they were hooking me up because they liked me or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how they do Because the they fries. give you like five pounds in the bag every time. I'm like, dude, what the hell? <laughs> like, I dude, they small. love me. Bro. I ordered small fries, not all fries. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, my God. Oh, and before I forget. Yeah. I have to bring up the, the the tank top gun. Revision Zero is amazing. Like I unspoken. enjoyed it. Tank top gun. was not a problem in unspoken. Golf. Merck did a good job with that thing. It's a great weapon. Very fun. And and it wasn't you know as game breaking as people were afraid it was going to be. You know. It's consistent. It's consistent. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for hitting us with those questions on Twitter. We appreciate all of you. Uh, again, our final episode before Lightfall, we will have another show probably in March. You're not going to hear from us for at least two weeks, maybe even three. I don't even know. Just We're going to be so deep in the content trying to figure things out. But as always, we will be around. So we'll let you know when we'll be live next. And uh, until then, we'll just go around the table, let you know where you can find us when we're not here. Cammy, where can the people find you? Um, twitch.tv slash camicakes and I put out an illegal clips montage on the YouTube today. It's pretty cool. Oh, is that finally up? I, I saw you tweeted about it. I was I was excited. I did. Nice. Okay. I get to watch that later. Uh, cool guy. Where can the people find you? Uh, Twitter and YouTube. Cool guy games. Drew? Find you. Twitch.tv slash Drewskis and YouTube.com slash Drewskis channel, I think. Out of boy. And I'm Fallout. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Fallout Plays or youtube.com slash Fallout Plays. Thank you for joining us. See you in Lightfall. Cool. I'm going to uh, release some, some still cookies live out for on, the Drifter. <laughs> still live <laughs> on Twitch. Uh, who do we want to raid? Let's look at the directory. Who's on the directory? Twitch chat. We're there. Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? We got Frabo. We got EK. Obi Katie Cat. Saltagreppo. Yeah. Saltagreppo. Do we want to raid Pepper Geppetto? I think so. He sure. just uh, soloed through comp all the way to Ascendant. I did see him tweet. I about think that's that. worth celebrating. Sure. Saltagreppo. Why not? Get you a man who can do both. He can. <laughs> all right. Go uh, Chiefs. Go hang out with Saltagreppo, who will be probably gunning for his, what is it, fourth raid belt? absolute mad lad take care y'all see you in lightfall